Welcome back, mother lovers, to a brand new episode of Last Call at McLaren's, the best damn How I Met Your Mother podcast on the internet. I am your host, Josh, here with my best bud, John, and it looks like we got a special guest today. Tell us what we yeah. got there, John. Well, everybody, this is Stay Puffed. She finally decided that she wanted to make an appearance, so there she is. She's not excited to be being held right now, but she's here. We don't um, get a boost in viewership because of that cat, and I don't know what else we can do. I'm just saying. Try it naked next time. <laughs> naked cat or us naked, which is, I don't know. <laughs> naked Either podcast. Way, naked podcast. We'll give it a shot. We'll probably lose half our viewers that way. Shit, you lose half of it. <laughs> yeah, never mind. But speaking we'll put of, extra layers on. Speaking of naked people, we're in for a treat today as we are talking season three, episode six. I'm <coughs> not that guy. For a That's second, right. I was like, "This episode doesn't have the naked man." <laughs> That's true. Not the not the naked man. A naked man, but not on screen. But before we do get into that, gotta say, guys, little disappointed. Nobody played the game this week. Come on, come on. What are we doing yeah. here? I mean, I understand that you know not everybody wants <clears throat> to play, but I, I mean, it is what it is. Not even any of our regulars, though. It's true. So we're gonna give you a. One more chance. We're going to do it one more time this week. Same question. What was Blah Blah's real name? There it is. Figure it out and let us know. We'll give you that shout out right on air. Shout All right. out loud. <clears throat> so, John, how are you doing since this I'm last week? Feeling a little stuffy, but uh, other yeah. than that, I am doing really good. Still yeah. high spirits. Still, here we are. Uh, Western New York is getting blanketed by an yeah. amazing amount of snow right now. We are in a state of emergency here, which, I, whatever. <laughs> snow, snow, and lots of snow. And then I look out my window, and all I see is grass. Sorry, guys. <laughs> wow. You know what? I will box up some snow and I will send it to you. I mean, that would be pretty hilarious. I, I get a package and I'm like, what is this soaking wet box? <laughs> Dude, oh, I would at least would put it in a box to like store it. Like I'll I'll line a box with some styrofoam and shit. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I, I'll I'll be on the lookout for the mailman. The box will say, exactly. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> and then I open it and it's just a punching bag that knocks me in the face. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh, he sent me some snow. Poof. I'm just out for like three hours on the floor. Yeah. That's that how we roll around epic. here. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. We're going to get into this episode. Like I said, season three, episode six. I'm not that guy. Uh, I'll be totally honest. I didn't. I thought this was n named something else. Before we started, I would have I thought it would have been. Yeah, I I feel like I just always assumed it was called Ted Mosby Sex Architect, but it's not. I mean, I'm not that guy. It doesn't sound like anything that would have to do with this episode because it's not just about Ted. Yeah, I mean, I get it because he's not that guy from the porn. I, I get it, but I don't know. I don't know. I guess in my head, I always thought of it as a different name yeah and then when i saw that when i saw the name i was like oh which episode is this and then i read the description i was like oh didn't didn't click that was what it was so well it's weird though that you mentioned that because i did <laughs> notice that the next episode being uh dose trepa mm -hmm. i noticed that that one has a in parentheses name yeah formerly known the as the home wrecker yeah, but I've never known it as the home wrecker. I'm pretty yeah. sure ever since I've seen it on TV, it's always been uh, Dose Trepa. And, and there's a later episode called Home Wreckers, like yes. later on. And so, yeah, I, I tweeted out. I haven't gotten a response from from anybody. I tweeted out to to Craig and to the How I Met Your Mother Twitter page. I I should re I should retweet it because Carter is also now on Twitter. He got that back is on Twitter true. and tag everybody in it again. Um, because I want to know, you know, like I have never, and I couldn't even find anything. I found reviews of the show from like the night after it aired that call it Dois Dois Tripla. So I, I want to know what this the home record thing is and why it's on Hulu's 
page. I have no idea what the deal with that is. Who knows? It's even it's Dosa Tripla in my in my DVD set, but it does not have the the formerly known as thing on it. That's on that's just on Hulu. So I don't know wh- where that came from. And I need to know. I got yeah. to know, man. I got to know. Got to know. Got to know. All right. So this uh, episode originally aired October 29th of 2007, <coughs> directed by Pamela Fryman. P. Fry. Yeah. And written by Jonathan Groff. This is his first episode uh, that he's written of three. He goes on to do uh, Everything Must Go and The Possimple. A couple of good episodes there. Uh, and then after leaving the show, he went on to write and produce uh, for a season of Scrubs. Which I thought was pretty cool. I was going to say, and, I recognize that name from Scrubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, he wrote, I think, one episode, but, but produced an entire season um, between 2009 and 2010. Uh, and then he uh, also went on to do shows uh, like Happy Endings and currently Blackish. That was pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So the summary for this one reads: Marshall must choose between his dream job and financial security at a different job. R- Robin learns a secret about Lily, and Barney discovers a porn star with the same name as Ted. I think it's a pretty good summary. That's uh-huh. a pretty good summary. Yeah. All right, so the episode starts off with Ted working from home, hoping for no distractions, when suddenly both Marshall and Barney burst into the room, yelling about having big news. And when Marshall uh, is about to tell his news, Barney interrupts him to exclaim the biggest news ever. He found a porno starring Ted Mosby. That's right. that's, that's pretty big news. I mean, I think how would so. you react if somebody found a porn starring <laughs> Joshua Rayner? I would, I would first, I would want to watch it <laughs> and then I would want to know who the hell this person is, but yeah. Fair. Now yeah. without making the movie reference, if you were going to have a porn name, what would your porn name be? Oh man. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe something like paul eagle i don't know strong i, I don't know <laughs> you can't call yourself that <laughs> why not all i would want to do is jump on your back and go eagle hey maybe that's part of our shtick you know that's what happens in every one I, of our why do i gotta be in your porn because we're a package deal now <laughs> <laughs> what, what would yours be uh, johnny hardwood <laughs> johnny hardwood dude i like it <laughs> <laughs> it's basic, but I mean, it, it gets the job done. I mean, I mean, are you related to Lance? <laughs> I'm his cousin. Twice his removed. Cousin. There it is. See, it all connects, man. It all connects. Oh yeah, no, it connects. <laughs> uh, so Barney, uh, Barney pulls out a copy of "Welcome to the Sex Plane," and in the credits, as the navigator, is someone by the name of Ted Mosby. Same exact spelling and everything. Uh, we then flash to a scene of Ted at his doctor's, which I thought was really funny, where the doctor says, uh, open wide. I guess you're more used to saying that than hearing it, Ted Mosby. And I'm like, that's, I mean, that's kind of unprofessional for oh, your yeah. doctor, man. Yeah. Like, like, come on, dude. Like, first well, off, the thing that makes me glad think you listen to watch porn, but like, you ain't got to tell that to the world. Well, so besides that fact, like, so you say that to him, but is that really a context that you hear a lot in porn? Open wide. Open wide? I mean, I I don't know. (laughs) Maybe I'm not watching the right ones or something. I have, yeah, that's not something I typically hear. There's a question that I was going to ask later on the episode, but we'll bring it up right here at the beginning. So, do you watch porn? Not the kind that they're that, not like this. I don't like the the storyline type stuff. Not really. Not because you know my answer. Like I've talked mm-hmm. about it before. I don't watch it. I can't. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off way too much. <laughs> I'm the guy who's like, who's paying for that fucking pizza? That's my point. Like storyline porn, I, I can't. I can't do. You know what I mean? If I want to watch something, I'll just watch a scene of something happening. You know what I mean? Like, but w- I don't need, I don't need the only one that I ever watched. That I thought was somewhat enjoyable. Was that pirates one? 
Oh my you remember God, that remember one? That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was the only one that was like, this one actually has a decent story. It's not it's not great, but it's better than any of the others that I've had seen in, before that. But I mean, you're otherwise, not wrong. Yeah. So though there are there are some that I always am, am intrigued by, like those parody ones. They they always intrigue me. See, those I would only watch <clears throat> because it's parodying something, and mm-hmm. I'd be like, I got I gotta watch it and find out what they did. Yeah. But, but even, even those, though, I'm like, I can't, like, this is terrible. Like, I, why am I sitting here watching this? Well, and that's the thing that gets me is, is, like, I listen to people who, like, who do watch it. Or, like, like there's a guy online who reviews porns, and he's like, oh, let me tell you. And I'm like, but why? Yeah. Like, I can't understand. Like, if I want to have sex, I'm going to have sex. It's not, there's, I don't get out of anything from watching someone else have sex while pleasing myself. That's fair. Okay. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean. Weird like that. (laughs) Everybody has their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own thing. (laughs) And in in this, Barney has a video called, uh, what was it called here? Uh, Welcome to the Sex Plane. That's what it was called. Well, so what I thought was funny about this was that they're watching it. And he's like, oh, here comes (laughs) a guy. I wonder if that's Ted Mosby. And Ted's like, no, he doesn't have enough stripes. No, no, I think he had too much. He had too many stripes. He had four or stripes because he's he's the captain or the co-pilot or whatever. Um, yeah, and he but he has to have three stripes if he's the navigator. Because <laughs> then later on, Barney's like, oh, oh, guy in uniform, three stripes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I love how Barney makes the comment though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what they were going for. It was costume accuracy, and it goes back to watching something like like one of the like other parody ones where I'm like. Sometimes you can't do costume accuracy though because like they're copyrighted characters. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely true. But I mean, they obviously did do costume accuracy yeah. with them because yeah. he did have the three stripes, which I thought was hilarious that it that it does come back around. Uh and so as Ted and Barney are about to sit down and watch this video, Marshall blurts out that he got the job at the NRDC. Which is Ooh. his dream job. It's his, you know, the environmental law firm, uh, the Natural Resources Defense Council. It's what he's wanted to do ever since he, you know, got into, you know, to the, to the field of law. And uh, Ten Marshall, you know, they hug in congratulations as Barney starts up the porn and he kind of, it kind of just makes everything weird. I thought that was funny. It's like, it's kind of weird that we're hugging while we're watching porn. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, so they're they're trying to see the Ted Mosby guy, and, and while watching, Lily and, and Robin walk in, and they're weirded out by the fact that everybody's sitting there watching porn. And I love Lily's comment: "I hope you didn't just win some sort of yeah. race." Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was it was a great it was a great little just kind of throwaway line. I mean, it is, but it's also something guys would totally do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably some would, yeah, sure. Uh, and so Marshall then tells Lily about the job. Uh, she's super excited to hear uh, all of this. And the girls sit down to watch the porn as well, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, it's then revealed that Marshall has a job interview at a different place called Nicholson, Hewitt, and West, a law firm that stands for everything that the NRDC is against. Marshall does not want to go to this thing, but Lily convinces him to uh, saying that uh, his dad is actually the one who got him the interview. We find out later on that it's because he, his dad went to school with Hewitt. So I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I have a couple of tidbits here about uh, Nicholson, Hewitt and West Uh, Nicholson, Hewitt and West is the same law firm that Barney's rival Clark Butterfield worked for in the season one episode of Milk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Butterfield. And I originally wondered if Nicholson, Hewitt, and West was a Batman reference because well, Jack Nicholson, Adam West, Adam West. Be- because we had the previous, uh, like the previous one that we had gotten in, in it was the, the um, what was the episode? It was with the, with the, the girl who he, Ted thought was a prostitute. Yeah, yeah, and it was the apparently. Superman reference with the, yeah. the the people from the Phantom Zone. And I was like, I couldn't find 
any link between Batman and anybody named Hewitt. And then I found out that it's actually the name of three of the dormitories at Wesleyan University, which is where obviously oh. we know that Ted Marshall and Lily go there, but Carter Bays and Craig Thomas went there as well. And I never thought about this. It never clicked, but we've heard this before that Ted Marshall and Lily actually lived in Hewitt Hall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So it did, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a comic book reference, but it was still a reference to something. So that is kind of cool. Yeah. Now but you I, live, I, I still love the, the Butterfield. Correct. Uh, maybe. He, I think there actually might be. Well, I remember there it's being a, a Jewett. Maybe that's what, no, because there's a Houghton and a Jewett. That's what there was. Okay. That's what it was. It was close. Yeah. <clears throat> But I still, I still love the Clark Butterfield thing. Butterfield. I, I think that's hilarious that it's the same place. I mean, that I is know. pretty funny. Yeah, it, that, I think that's really cool that they they brought that uh, place back in. Uh, and so finally, Ted Mosby, porn star, shows <laughs> up in the movie. We don't see him yet, uh, but Ted wants to know who this guy is, man. And, and he he wonders, is he, are, are we related somehow? He mentions that the only famous Mosby is some like Confederate general. He's, I, I love Barney. Barney. He's like, it's definitely not that guy. Definitely <laughs> not that guy. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, and so then after the opening uh, of the of the show, we get the gang at the bar. And then we get to see Wendy, the waitress, you know, uh, one of her few appearances on the show. She only she's only in the show. Like. I think. When I did my interview with her, I had calculated it's like eight percent of the show. Oh shit! It's not, it's not very much, but she stands out as a character, you know, throughout throughout the series. Um, yeah. And so she shows up, brings brings Ted over a bottle of water uh, in case he's dehydrated. Uh, obviously, kind of poking fun at the whole porn thing, which I thought was funny. Uh, Ted being like, "No, now we know you watch porn." Here's my thing, right here. <laughs> Why yeah. did Ted not try to bang her? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like that shit would have worked. Barney's the one that, that goes for it, and and she, I think her and Ted probably would have had a little something. I don't oh, know. Oh, they would have had a lot of something. Yeah, I I think so. We then uh, find out that Ted gave an interview with a place called AVW Adult AVW. Video Adult Video Weekly, uh, which Ted apparently thought was Architecture Vision Weekly. How uh, ironic, though, the two similar acronyms for two totally yeah. different things. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But the the interview that he gives, he said it like, that goes on for like 20 minutes. And he's how he talks about, you know, he had spent so many long nights being bent over a table and how he's doing this with a bunch of guys. And that with was a like a bunch of guys. Scoop. Yeah. I'm just like, man, Ted, you are so oblivious. It's <laughs> he just he just makes things worse for himself all the time. Oh, so badly, so oh, quickly. Yeah. yeah, but he made things great, probably for the other Ted Mosby. I'm just saying, you know. Although I don't know, free press. <laughs> there, there was probably some people upset that he didn't get do that all male, uh, all male yeah, movie. Maybe, but they probably were checking his stuff out to find out. I'm just saying. They say, all, you know, uh, all press no is good publicity. press. But... Oh, I was going to go with no publicity is bad publicity. Yeah, I mean, same same kind of thing. You know, they say that whether whether it's actually true, it's that's a different story. But uh, that's what they say. Yeah. Uh, so so then Marshall comes in after the interview uh, with Jefferson Coatsworth, played by John Cho. This is actually just a few years after the first Harold and Kumar movie. And okay. one, I was and wondering which one came first. And it's one year before the second Kumar, uh, Harold and Kumar uh, was released. So he's kind of like hitting his comedic stride at this point uh, okay. in, in his career. Uh, and he seems like a real nice guy here, you know. Uh, but then we get this scene where just three years later, he's getting arrested for something and dragged out uh, of the law office. And there's a, a, a moment later in this season where Marshall makes a comment about 
it's after he leaves Nicholson, Hewitt and West. And, and he talks about like the shit that's going on and his former boss getting arrested. But I, I don't remember if that, if, if that takes place, like that scene takes place three years in the future. Like, I don't remember if it's like, I'm going to have to pay attention when that, when that episode comes up. Yeah. definitely. Um, because like this specifically says it's three years later that he's getting arrested, you know? So if it happens, you know, a handful of episodes from now that that timeline doesn't obviously line up, but I'm interested to find out if, if, if it lines up because they've been really good about continuity and stuff. So yeah, I feel like that would be a pretty big glaring oversight if they didn't. So, uh, Jeff then uses his incredible charisma to seduce Marshall and Barney. He understands what's happening here. He knows exactly what this play is and Marshall doesn't really want to believe it. Uh, but then he reveals that Jeff invited him out to dinner and he's going to wine and dine and maybe even 69. You know what I'm saying? That'd be awkward. <laughs> hey, it would fit in with that uh, interview that Ted gave. I'm just saying, <laughs> man. I'm just You're saying. It all ties together. Uh, Lily convinces him to go so he can at least get a free meal out of it, man. Come on. You know, it's a nice, fancy restaurant. He ain't paying. I mean, we've done it. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. And I ate a lot of food that night. <laughs> uh, so then Robin reveals that the porn Ted Mosby is from the same hometown as Ted. And they decide they're going to go to a, this uh, local porn convention that's that's coming up to find out exactly who this guy is. Uh, so then we flash over to uh, dinner with Jeff and Marshall. They're having a good time. And then Jeff shows Marshall his starting salary. And it's apparently huge, man. We don't I ever know, know what it is. Yeah, it's got to be six figures. I mean, the At way least. they react, the way they react to it, it's got to be, you know, over 100,000 a year kind of a thing, you know. And, and then they see. Patrick Swayze. We don't see Patrick Swayze, but they see Patrick Swayze, <laughs> who's apparently friends with Jeff, uh, and even bought them some wine. I was gonna say, even bought them the bottle of wine that they were drinking. Yeah. On. Uh, and then Jeff continues crazy to Swayze. crazy Swayze, and Jeff continues to seduce him. He's working his magic. You know, he's the business version of Barney at this point. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then we flash over to Lily and Robin. And we learn that Lily has a problem, John. She is a shopaholic. Dude, who... not only is she a shopaholic, dude, she is the worst. Oh, yeah. And, and, and she, sh but it's not just that she's a shopaholic. She shops when she's stressed, or oh, when she's yeah. upset about something. And doesn't, it's not just like, okay, I've got cash and I can buy stuff. No, she's got dozens of credit cards. Oh, yeah. And who knows, some unknown huge amount of credit card debt. Uh, I, of I which would assume her credit card debt was probably close to that six-figure. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked, man. I really wouldn't. Uh, and Marshall has no idea about any of this. Um, he won't for at least another episode. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure it is the next episode when he finds yeah. out. Um, and she... She's this is the reason that she's been pushing him to take this job to at least you know go to the interview and all this other stuff, and uh, because she knows that that they need the money. Um, then they go to, over to the porn convention, Ted and Barney are there, and they find the other Ted, like played by none other than Kevin Heffernan. Heffernan, yeah, man, aka Farva from <laughs> Super Troopers. Gotta love it, love uh... that guy. <laughs> him and his shenanigans gotta love it uh he reveals uh that when he was a kid ted saved him from some bullies and he vowed to honor ted and when he got into porn he chose to take his name as an homage uh the idea of ted mosby sex architect then comes up uh between uh porn ted and uh barney and then ted says it wasn't me. I, I'm not the one who saved you uh, when you were a kid. It was this guy named Lance Hardwood. <laughs> and so I want to know where, first off, where did Ted come up with that name? 
You know what I mean? Like it's. I'm, I'm sure he probably thought about it on the way over there. Maybe, but it's like, was he trying to give him a name that would entice him to take it? Oh, yeah. Because like, you know what I mean? Because he's like, you may not know this, but that is a perfect porn name. You know, it's like he. I, I feel like he had to have been work playing to that angle, hoping that he would take it like that. So I don't know. I had to come uh, up with an awesome name like. William Hug. <laughs> Why do people keep asking me if I like him? Do you know what that's from? No. It's from, it's from The Office. <laughs> because uh, Packer, you remember Packer? Yeah, yeah. His license plate says uh, WLLHNG. So oh, everybody yeah. asks him, do, oh, are you a fan of William Hung? <laughs> it's just, it's, his license plate says Well, well Hung. hung. Yeah, and then he's like, "Why does everybody ask me that?" Yeah, she bang, she bang. I remember. Yeah, that was that was something. That dude, uh, that dude was something. I have no professional training whatsoever. <laughs> oh man! All right. So after a, a night out with Jeff drinking uh, and, and whatnot, Marshall he he stayed the night over because because of all the you know the fun and everything that was happening. He gets to do the walk of shame. He does, man. He does the walk of shame. Uh, and when he gets home, he tells Lily that he took the job and that he feels terrible about it, you know? So he, here's the only problem I have with that. Okay. okay. I understand why they made Marshall take the walk of shame. But you're going to tell me <laughs> that Jeff got him to sign the contract, well, essentially agree to take the job, and you're not going to give him a ride home? Well, yeah, man. Think about it. he he's the business version of Barney. I know that, but you're you're not even gonna attempt to give this brand new lawyer of yours a ride anyway. Nope. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> he's he's holding on to the power, John. Oh, he's holding on to power. Something. You know, he's got him. And plus it's just a funny oh a yeah. funny scene, you know, really. I feel like that's a, I feel like in reality, he probably would have at least like Got him a, a, a taxi, a something, you know, paid for him at least to get home. But nope, nope. Uh, so then at the bar, Marshall is still kind of freaking out about taking the job. Uh, and Robin is trying to convince Lily to tell him about her, all her debt. Oh, yeah. And then Lily goes over to, to tell him about this, but she can't do it. And instead tells him to take the job at the NRDC because she doesn't want her mistake to ruin his dream, which that, that's noble, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's still thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars in debt that you're sitting here because you like to buy shoes. Well, here's the, the real question that I have about this because this is where it gets. So we find out about it during the next episode that, you know, her debt, you know, it also affects on Marshall. Mm -hmm. How did he not find out about it sooner? Taxes and such forth. Well, taxes don't don't look at debt. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So uh, unless they're trying to buy something big, because they they don't buy a car and they don't, yeah. you know, all they have is the, the apartment. There was there'd be right. no reason for her. And as if she's minimally pl paying, you know, the credit card bills to at least keep them at bay and hiding the bills there's really you know probably it's probably pretty easy for her to keep it from him. yeah i didn't think about it like that never mind yeah yeah she's a she's a sneaky one that lily she's a <laughs> sneaky one just like all the time she you know was sneaking around and uh smoking cigarettes and shit you're not wrong yeah uh so all right so marshall then goes outside and calls jeff to tell him uh that he's not taking the job but before he can tell him Jeff pulls up in a limo and takes Marshall to a place called Tuckahoe Funland. That's right. <laughs> Tuckahoe. The funnest place on earth. Or so they say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff tells Marshall that this place would be his one and only client. And this convinces Marshall to take the job. You know, because, you know, how can you how can you hate a place like this? Then future Ted reveals that Tuckahoe Funland has some pretty major problems about to oh, happen yeah. uh, with people dying 
and having this like mass E. coli outbreak at some point, which, uh, Ma- yeah, with the corn dogs, which Marshall runs to the bathroom and it kind of like, hints at the possibility of that's what it is uh, already starting. Uh, and then Lily texts him while he's in there because there was this whole thing about uh, Robin made this comment about how they text each other when they're in the bathroom. Yeah, and, for uh, motivation. Yeah, you know, for moral support and stuff. And so she does that here, which I thought was really funny. Uh, and then the episode ends with Barney walking uh, in with a new porn called Lance Hardwood Sex Architect. Uh, and as they watch it, they realize that it was filmed in the apartment and Barney helped them do it. Yeah, well, he mentions, he goes, uh, I get yeah. to have my name in the credits for uh, location scouting. Yeah, you know, he he definitely scouted some locations for him. <laughs> Let's go have sex on the couch. <laughs> so that was season three, episode six. I'm not that guy. Uh, John, what are your overall thoughts uh, on this episode? It's a fun episode. Uh, I love the Kevin uh, Kevin Heffernan appearance. He's yeah. just such a funny guy. Yeah, I, I've always loved him as Farva. Uh, he's on the show Tacoma FD. Uh, I've seen all of that show. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, it's him and one of the other guys from, well, a couple of the guys have actually made appearances, but at least one of them is also uh, full time on the show. Hilarious. Okay. But yeah. this is just funny because me and you make jokes from this episode still all the time. Yeah. Ted Mosby, <laughs> sex architect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this one. It has, uh, some really fun is, yeah, it's like the, the whole porn thing is, is a real kind of fun. Didn't really matter all that much storyline though. I think it would have been hilarious if it came back a bunch of times, like, like pa- kind of peppered throughout the show. That would have been really funny. Like we see like a new porno star in this guy here and there. That would have been really cool. I don't know. Maybe, sure. maybe there is something in the background that we just, I'd never seen it. So I'm going to be obviously with this show. We're paying a lot more attention, so that maybe hilarious. maybe we'll see something more later on down the road. I don't know. Um, like when when uh, Barney gives up his entire stash of porn, maybe it's in there. Maybe there's one in there randomly. Maybe we don't know. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I, I enjoy this, and it helps to push uh, you know the the upcoming storyline a little bit. With you know Lily, what she's you know her, her debt and everything <laughs> going into the next episode and everything, so that's I like I like all that stuff and the stuff with Marshall. I mean, the NRDC that's a big part. That's something that he strives for and builds towards throughout the show. Yeah, you know, and we see him go from you know <clears throat> job that he hates to job that he hates before he gets there. You know, so. It, it's it's nice to kind of see that that start. What's what's your favorite one that he bounces to uh, before he gets to NRDC? I love when he's working at GNB because he's there with Barney and stuff. I I, I really that is a good I, one. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like his time at Garrison Coot. <laughs> Garrison Coot. Well, hey, isn't that that's the environmental? That is the NRDC. Garrison Coots. Oh, yeah. I don't think I realized it was the NRDC. <laughs> Yeah, because that's them trying to uh, save the the environment. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love, I love that stuff. Martin Short, guys, Garrison Coots is he's fucking hilarious. So good, man. That's uh, a they, big snake. That's a big snake. I'm lactose intolerant. You could have had anything you could, here. You could have had anything. There was even talk of an inbound quiche. A gouda, a gouda, an inbound gouda, an inbound gouda. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to, to talk about all those. But we aren't there yet, folks. Uh, but where we are is that your favorite part of the night, and that is Barney's blog. Suit up, bitches. Yeah, that's right. All right, so this one is aptly titled Ted Mosby, sex architect. Yes, written uh, yeah, posted on Monday, October 29th of 2007, and it reads as follows. As many of you know, I have been hard at work, pun intended, on my highly anticipated adult film script, Ted Mosby, Sex Architect. <laughs> For the better part of a week now, I've been furiously banging out the following body of work. Again, 
pun intended. I've completed both the opening scene as well as the climax. <laughs> and Act 2 still needs some fleshing out. I'm on fire. But yeah. once I figure out how to work my way to the end, the central dilemma of any adult film, I'm confident that I've got a magnum opus on my hands. Guilty. Naturally, I couldn't complete this without my beloved blog readership, so I'm calling for suggestions or sample artwork for the DVD box of Ted Mosby, Sex Architect. Note, they must be PG, no graphic images allowed. Kids might watch this thing. And then he puts his email, the Stinson at yahoo.com. And then there are two pages from the script. Fair. So I'm going to go through it. And we're gonna hear. We're gonna. I'm gonna read the, the script a little bit to you guys. I, I've got the perfect idea for the cover, though. Before you read the script, okay. You remember the building that uh, what's his name designed? That the guy's like, it's a penis. Oh yeah. It should literally be somebody like it should be the Kevin Heffern and Ted Mosby mm -hmm. in a desk with that there, but the desk needs to be like lower, so it's like right above lap height, and he's like sticking around it, so it's like so it looks like it's coming out of his crotch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of, uh, and then he's just like, you know, Ted Mosby, sex architect. Uh, dude, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And if somebody hasn't done that, man, that that's a bummer because that is that is some brilliant stuff. <laughs> that's a penis. That's a penis. All right. So, Ted Mosby, sex architect, from Barnacle Productions. I love it. it. Says fade in, exterior, best mansion ever, day. Lance Hardwood, early 30s, very ma very male, perfectly uh, coiffed blonde locks, struts around the grounds in a bathrobe with matching necktie. He happens upon D.D. Cummings, his tan and lonely client who is busy admiring the architecture of her new house from the cramped confines of a short sundress. D.D. Oh, Lance Hardwood, thank you for designing my mansion. I find the hardwood style so manly. Lance, if a, if a F-16 could design a house, it would look exactly like this. Now, Didi, about the payment. Lance unties his bathrobe and they get it on in a serious way. 90 minutes later, huh. Lance continued. I must go, Didi. Stay, Lance. Lance, if only. Oh, by the way. You still owe me $30 million. Lance pushes a button on his watch, pixelates, and vanishes. Then it says, writer's note, at some point, maybe in Act 2, Lance will take a job with NASA, and then in parentheses he puts ASA? Designing a new space station. Not sure how to work that in, but it's kind of important. Then it says, interior, space station, later. Lance repixelates beside two identical female scientists. They're buxom, yet hold advanced engineering degrees. Lance unfurls his massive blueprint, which reads Project Gemini. Twin buxom scientists. Lance, you came on such short notice. Lance, let me assure you, there's nothing short about Lance Hardwood. They say astronauts can see two things from space. The Great Wall of China... And Lance Hardwood, sex architect. It's a pretty good line, I gotta say. That is a really great fucking line. <laughs> Lance unties his bathrobe. Twin buxom scientists. Looks like you've got the right stuff for the job. Th then uh, they get intimate in a serious way. A way made more serious by the fact that they're in that there are three of them, yet no gravity. <laughs> 90 minutes later. <laughs> Lance. I must go. <laughs> Twin bucks and scientists. Stay. Lance, if only. I recently completed plans for the new Women's United Nations building and wouldn't want to miss the erection. The two females rocket the two female rocket scientists giggle uncontrollably as Lance pushes a button on his watch, pixelates, and <coughs> vanishes. Fade to black. And that there, friends, is Lance Hardwood's sex architect. <laughs> Sounds about right. I mean, I'll be honest. I might watch that. It sounds so ridiculous 
that it might actually be hilarious to watch. It makes me think of, you said you've been rewatching uh, Community recently. Yep. Uh, do you remember when they when Abed makes the sci-fi movie? Oh, yeah. It makes me think of that. Like, if that was a porn, like, I would watch that because it's so ridiculous. I would. I think it would be hilarious to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what it, what it made me think of. So. But yeah, that uh, that was Barney's blog, and this was season three, episode six. I'm not that guy. Uh, you got any last things uh, for the fans out there, Johnny Boy? No. All right. <laughs> well, why don't you tell them where they can find you on the internet? Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already heard, hop on over to Twitter at Simply Sane J1, where you can find my blog, <clears throat> my podcast. Uh, pretty much just my blog these days. It's not much, but it's something. I yeah. mean, it's you know, it's fun. It's all about me. It's uh, me exposing who I am as a person to the world. What about you, sir? Where are you these days? You, you can find me on Twitter at JP Rayner. That's J P R A Y N O R, as well as on a movie at Movie Blog Merc. That is a Twitter page for my site, Merc with a Movie Blog. If you are uh, watching this on the video, you are watching it on the Merc with Movie Blog YouTube channel. So be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, click that little bell, whatever the fuck that thing is. It's, it's a yeah. tricky little, it's a tricky little bitch. You always want to get notified though. You want to know do. when we drop our episodes. I mean, he does a lot of cool shit on this channel. There's trailer reviews. There's movie stuff. There's Granted, I haven't in a, in a while, but I hope to plan to. <laughs> I hope to plan to. That, 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 that's how I'm going to put that. <laughs> but uh, if you are listening to this podcast, uh, you can head over to Anchor anchor.fm slash last call H I M Y M. Leave us a voice message <laughs> over there. We'll play that on air. You know, we always love to hear from you guys. Yeah. If let you... us know if we're doing something you like, let us know yeah. if we're doing something you don't like. Maybe yeah. you have an idea for something. Yeah. Uh, maybe we forgot to mention something that you noticed or something. Absolutely. We love to hear all that stuff. Uh, and if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, be sure, you know, if you like what you hear, leave a five star review uh, and we'll read that out on air as well. You know, and, Hell yeah. uh, and make sure you hop on Twitter at last call H I M Y M while you still can, folks. And uh, be sure to check us out there. Also, check us out on Instagram at the same handle at last call H I M Y M. Uh, you know, follow us wherever we are. You know, we'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, I think that's, a, I think that's about all I got for them. Though, be sure to uh, answer the question, guys, this week. What, what is was Blah Blah's, Blah Blah's name? real name? Yes, let us know. Hop on that Twitter page at Last Call H I M Y M and let us know the answer to that question. But uh, that's about all I got for him, man. What do you got for him? You don't have to go home, but you mm -hmm. can't listen here. That's right, folks. Catch you next time.